So how do you shade water? Oh, isn't that such a simple question with a simple answer? You just get a glass shader and you throw it on your mesh and you get a principal BSDF with a white material and throw it on your particles and WHAT THE FUCK WHY IT'S ALL BLACK? This tutorial will be kindly split into three separate sections for you. Uh, in the first section, we're gonna discuss my general mindset when trying to achieve realism and realism with water specifically, some of the challenges you may face when trying to shade water properly. In the second part, we're gonna build a shader from scratch. I'm gonna show you all the nodes I use and why and a lot of shading tricks. And on the third part, we're gonna talk about particles, particle shading, and a bunch of particle tricks and whatever. Woo! Part one. The first and most important thing of all of them is use real world reference. Get a video or photo or whatever of the type and scale of water you are trying to recreate or similar situations and similar biomes and whatever of the water you're trying to recreate. Because water is it's a universal solvent. Almost everything can be dissolved by water. So if you have this very red rocks and then you put this blue water and it doesn't like remove any of those red particles from the ground this will just look alien it won't look realistic so the first thing you need to do please get real world reference of the specific kind of water you're trying to recreate because water is incredibly complex you get clean water like tap water or dirty water from like a murky river in a, like a jungle or something there's lots of organic matter and the, there's the other kind of river water that is completely transparent very clean and is of a very dark blue you have this incredible phenomenon on the amazon for example where there's two rivers at two different temperatures merge with each other and they just don't mix for miles and miles because of the differences in temperature and whatever so yeah there is a lot of complex water i don't don't even get me started on seawater i'm getting ahead of myself Second, uh, use the correct eye index of refraction. Index of refraction, IOR, this value right here. YouTubers, when they just do a simulation, they slap a glass shader on top of it, and then they don't change the index of refraction. They just leave it as the glass. Okay, it's very similar. The effect is very subtle, but this will help you separate the glass from the water, just like you would in real life. It gets me every time. Every time I see someone shading water with a glass shader without changing the index of reflection. Ah! Next, most of it will be solved by just using actual reference, but scale matters. A glass of clean water will look very, very different than a bucket of clean water. Not only on your simulation, you should always use real world scales. Uh, I have made this mistake oh so many times, including on this video. By the way, this, I, I was just doing a test. I uh, wasn't caring about scale. I just needed the wave modifier thing to work. I was trying to brainstorm this idea that show up in my head when I was re responding to a comment. So I, I wasn't using proper scale here. This is like 10 meters and the tsunami should be like 100 meters. I don't know. And that's, well, that's what happens when you get scale wrong. You get different speeds, different amounts of particles, different amounts of everything. So enough with the simulation tips. It's a shading tutorial. So yeah, shaders. Part two. The shade. Okay, class, question time. What's the default shader that is closest to the look of water? It's the uh, uh, refraction shader? No, wrong, it's the glass shader. But then you just said that I can use the glass shader without the thing and, and it looks bad. Yes. But then why? Because you're using it wrong. Why are you talking like Batman? Out of my glass. Okay. Anyway, where was I? Oh yes, glass shader, obviously. You plug it in, it looks horrible. Why? Well, those other YouTubers that have a brand deal with Puget Systems or whatever and have a Thread Reaper in 239s, they're gonna lead you to believe the only problem is that Blender default settings don't have enough light bounces, so they're gonna go here into the light path settings and they're gonna just crank it all up to 256 and the problem is solved. <laughs> the only <laughs> Please, I, 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 need a, I need a PC <laughs> with 239s please i will sacrifice my mom to get one please <laughs> i wish i could solve problems just doing that <laughs> so what peasants like you and i do well 
we mix the glass shader with a transparent shader. Using the slider? No, using the light path node. What are you doing in my classroom? I thought I told you to get out. Yeah, but I heard you talking about 3090s and I thought you had one. Get out! So just press Shift A, go to input and find the light path node. We're gonna use the ray depth output and just plug that in into the factor of our mix shader. Make sure the glass shader is on top and the transparency transparent shader is on the bottom. I can't speak sometimes. Basically what we're doing is we're telling Cycles to turn this glass shader into a transparent shader and compute the result after X amount of bounces. The reason we're doing this is to solve this uh, weird black spot problem that glass often has in CGI. The way I like to control this is I put a math node in between and then I set it to greater than and whatever this value is, anything that takes more than this number of bounces will become transparent. So you can set this to around 10 and and that's generally what works. Technically, this is not a great solution because if you set this value too low, your shader will be way more transparent than glass and you're gonna lose lots of those cool reflections and refractions. So there are some very specific edge cases where this won't work and there you'll still be having some weird black spots. Generally, they are fixed with good lighting and a good interaction between your collider object and your water mesh. If they are intersecting weird, sometimes there might be some weird black but in general, this shader will work very well. If all you need to simulate is very small scale, clean water, then you're done. Bye! But if your desires go further than glasses and buckets, we must now turn to the villain of the century, Volumetrics. Pom pom pom. I'm just kidding, Volumetrics aren't scary anymore. Cycles X took care of that for us. So add a volume absorption shader and a volume scatter shader, mix them together with a mix shader, and then group all of these nodes together to make a fancy big group node, and then expose all the pertinent values. That will take care of your shading needs for most of water you will ever do. So with all that in mind, let's apply this shader into to a real scene. This is the scene you probably saw in the thumbnail and uh, my objective with this scene is to pay on an homage to all Brazilian rivers because of the dirt riverbeds. They are all brown or green and they are terrible looking. Most of this dirt is not man-made and unless you're in, in Sao Paulo then yeah that is totally man-made. So if we just drop the shader we just made into the mesh it looks like glass and you'll notice that no weird black spots appear and if some do just like here we can drop this incredibly down. I know I'm just going against my own advice here, but I'm gonna just drop it to like about 0.5 here or something because this is what got me best results in the top-down view. Here's a tip, by the way, if you don't need to see all of those reflections, like if you are looking from a specific angle and it's locked, you can just tweak the values even if it looks unrealistic from the side view. The top view looks fine, so I'm just optimizing everything I can. But anyway, I'm not gonna mess around with the glass color or the transparency color and we're gonna focus on the two volumetric colors. For clean water, for example, you can just set a single color volume absorption and it will look just decent because it's clean water, there's no particles flowing around, bacteria, there's no algae. For ocean water, you, you have some leeway, it's just generally blue or greenish. River water, you have lots of color variation, it's generally basically, it's a complete pain in the ass. So how are we going to shade this? Let's talk about volume absorption first and then we move to volume scattering because we will need the both. I don't like to use a single like color for the volume absorption throughout the whole simulation because water doesn't have a single color all throughout an entire river. You will need to have different kind of shades in different areas and you have to think about what water is doing here. In this case the water is flowing and the x-axis in this direction and it's like moving rocks around and it's moving dirt around so I want the water to get progressively dirtier the further along it moves on the x-axis. There's a very quick way to do that. We just get texture coordinates, we take the position coordinates and we separate them into x, y, z and we get the x position, use a map range node to bring it towards where we're gonna go and then we drop a color ramp in between and plug that into the color. Here's some kind of greenish, yellowish and it's gonna get progressively dirtier and like brownish and when it comes to this direction. So this is how it looks. Uh, I have tweaked the shader for a long long time off camera because I apparently can't record and render at the same time so this is like the little setup 
I have for this gradual change of color and the volume absorption. The absorption color it's easy because it's just like a general density of particles floating around in water at all times. The farther it gets, the darker it gets, so it's just it's easy to set up. The volume scatter is a pain in the butt because we're trying to uh, represent more dynamic situations with a bunch more of these loose particles and we're trying to use that to maybe get away with using less particles on the final render. So what we need here to simulate this complex interactions is basically a way to tell Blender where we want this volume scattering to occur. Water will be interacting with particles or dust or whatever. Uh, we want a thick layer of volume scattering with uh, like a brownish color in the bottom where the water is presumably just making lots of dirt move around and we need another layer of volume scattering like with a whitish color in where we usually get the foaming because if you look at reference if you look at uh, like this waterfall right here you will see that water itself gets whiter because there's lots of little microscopic trapped bubbles that you can simulate with particles but you it's better just to do it with volumetrics because it's less taxing on your system than millions and millions and millions of particles apparently the way we get this is to a very very clever texture that not that much people use if you go into your textures menu here on the shader editor you scroll down until you get point density what this little node here does it's basically magic it takes particle system and display it as a volume it takes every particle and assigns it a certain radius around that particle that it turns transforms into volumetrics. So if I just plug that in to uh, make an example, you're gonna see this weird uh, white like gradient where there's lots of little dots. What you can do with this is you can control the density and color of your volume scattering along with your simulation particles. So let's say you need the spray particle area to be white, you just pick the right object, you pick the spray particle system, you use that on your shader to drive a color ramp and you plug that into the color and plug that into the density and boom! now you're got a white area around where the spray particles would be and also you can do that with the foam particles or the bubble particles you should like look at your scene and see what particles are interacting better with the environment and in this case the spray and foam are doing as good of a job as you can I didn't even simulate the bubble particles what I'm going to do here as I'm going to uh, mix that output of density with a procedural texture setup so we can get rid of those dots we can even make this texture 4D and animate the W volume. Here is my finished result. I did a lot, a lot, a lot of tweaking without recording because, well, I would be recording for five hours. Let me just give you the grand tour. Here is my little procedural setup. We got the density, we got a few nodes, math node, mix RGB node. All of this give us an output that subtracts the black parts from the dots. Instead of dots, they are now little puffs of noise texture. So if we render this, now we get this interesting foam. Just one more thing, I have exposed the mix factor between the volumes of absorption and the volume scattering and sometimes instead of adding them together you just need to subtract one from the other so you, if you use the same output here that you use to drive the density of the volume scattering and plug that into the factor you will remove this volume absorption from everywhere there is a little bit of density on the volume scatter and that will get rid of some weird artifacts that maybe happen sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't we're basically done with the volumetrics and and we're gonna jump into the most exciting part, the particles. All the tutorials out there, they just tell you to give a white material to your particles because it's a simulation for foam and spray particles. But if you think about it, these spray particles are like droplets, right? The optimal material for them would be the same exact material as the water. At very small scales, there is no need to use a different material for your particles at all. You should absolutely, at very small scales, use the same material of of the water to shade your drops. That will become very expensive and taxing on your hardware, but if you use the same shader here and just limit the bounces, sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't, you will have to increase the number of bounces. And the way water works is that basically the bubbles are just trapping air and all the reflections on the surface of that bubble that most of the light and then it's bouncing around so much uh, within the millions of bubbles that are occurring that it looks like white. In theory, you should always use the same material as your water for your drop particles. For the bubble particles, you should use something like this, an outer shell of like reflective material 
and there's nothing on the inside. And for your foam particles, you should use your water material with a volume inside of it, but that will be extremely expensive on your setup. It will look way more realistic if you are just looking for something like a still image. Use the same material as your water mesh for the bubbles, a material like this for your bubbles, and a material like, uh, I don't know, this for your foam particles. What I usually do to save memory in is that I use lots of shaders to mimic the real properties that would happen. If your camera is very distant and the particles are like smaller than one pixel, it doesn't matter. The smaller you scale gets, the more you will have to care about how the particles are supposed to interact with light. For example, at very small scales, like one meter or below, you will always have to use just glass, 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 glass in all of them, all of the particles. It's gonna take forever to simulate. The way you combat that, you can use various types of shaders. The first one you can use is just a white shader. It will kind of work. The second thing you can use is the shader I told you how to do on this Mentafold tricks that I used for long periods of time before I start thinking about it and just it kind of looks like dental clay sometimes it, it just kind of looks too rough it gets the job done it makes more detailed simulations easier and it has you get away with less geometry if you make your particles small enough and use that shader you can get away with using the smallest polygon possible this is only three faces and all these three faces are triangles and look at this you can see the difference between those two images and this renders way faster because they're way less polygons being in instance but that's what i use for the final render i just use the same particle for spray and foam and i use just 100 percent metallic shader on the particles and it looks awesome obviously there are some artifacts of the simulation because i didn't simulate it correctly do you remember this video right yeah the same thing happened here there's this weird patterning that happens when you don't have enough time steps uh if you make the simulation better this disappears but it takes forever to simulate using this 100 percent metallic shader you get this result that is very similar to what you would get with if you had a lot of water but since there is no transparency there is no blackening happening and we're all happy you can also use a mix between the solutions you can use the same noise uh, musgrave alpha technique with this metallic thing i think that's it actually uh so what did we learn today let's make a list one just use reference and study it until your eyes fall out i don't care two use the proper correct scale for everything three glass shader is a bitch so use every trick you can find to make it less of a pain in the ass four use the point density texture to get a dynamic volume scatter setup for your volume scatter needs and six experiment a lot with your particle shaders thanks for sitting up through this tutorial till here i appreciate it you probably had to sit through like five ads and thanks for you know giving me money yeah that's it if you liked this video give it a like if you disliked it well i'm sorry youtube recommend you this but hey if you find all, any of my little random tangents remotely interesting why don't you subscribe and leave a comment telling me everything i got wrong i just enjoyed all that much when some comments down there and say oh that's not how cycles works and light bounces don't, don't work like that no. and you should have used uh, x node to bend the light correctly then you wouldn't have the blackening problem anyway uh yeah i know uh bye